In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. You know, when I was uh, preaching last Sunday in our worship, I began my sermon and said, what has been taking place in Israel at this time is just so devastating, and we need to just stop and have a pause and uphold those people at this time. One week later, it's devastating what's been taking place. There has been so much destruction in that land, Israel and Gaza, and we just lift them up. I know for myself, you turn on the news and you can watch it for a few moments and then I turn it off again. It's just devastating, everything that's presented. And we just lift up these people at this time going through so much suffering, so much has been destroyed. And we know that this isn't what it's all about because just a week ago we were looking at Ukraine and Russia and what's taking place there. And that hasn't subsided, that still continues. There's so much that is taking place within our world which is so hard and we know that it's not only over there, it's in our country and in our lives as well. And so I was reflecting for today and saying, what is it that I can offer in terms of the word today? And the scripture that we had this morning from Philippians, some of the verses just stood out to me. And I'd like to spend some time, my three areas, and go through some of those verses that we had in Philippians. Because Paul writes, and he says those words which are probably fairly familiar to us, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. So let's start with number one. Rejoice. In the Lord, always. Rejoice in the Lord, always. When you see what's taking place throughout our world, you say, how? How can we hold on to that rejoicing? And yet it's important to put this in context in terms of Paul himself. You know, when he wrote those words, he wasn't like sitting at a computer and saying, I've got to preach on Sunday morning. I mean, what, sh what should I say to these people? Ah, rejoice in the Lord always. That's a good point. No, he was in prison. He was struggling. He was chained. And he was trying to come to terms with what he was dealing with. And what's so interesting is that he writes to this church, and you know what he could easily have said? You people think you're struggling? You're kidding. Look at me. I'm sitting in prison. I'm chained. Don't tell me about your problems. Think about me. But he didn't say that. Paul and said, said rejoice in the Lord always. And as I say, I believe he was also writing to himself at that time and saying, this is what I need to do in all of the struggles. I need to hold on to that rejoicing. And that rejoicing is just truly being able to give thanks, to acknowledge God's presence and power that goes far beyond all of the struggles that we experience. Rejoice. And then he says, rejoice in the Lord. You know, he doesn't simply say, just be happy. You know that song, be happy? It's that one which I remember, don't worry, be happy, right? Good, good piece, I love it. 
But I mean, Paul wasn't simply saying that. He was saying, rejoice in the Lord. And, you know, I, I have this image of God just being there and just overreaching and standing and holding out God's hands like this. And all of us are down below and just reaching up and knowing that we are encompassed and embraced by God. And what we have to do is to that, do that rejoicing in the Lord. I mean, it's not that God is needing us to rejoice in Him. God doesn't need that at all. We do the rejoicing in the Lord because in doing that, we realize how embraced and cared for we are by our God. That it's not just us alone, but we're saying we're rejoicing in the Lord. And how often? Always. I mean, it's not just when we come to worship on a Sunday morning and we say, here we are, Lord, we're going to rejoice, 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 and worship's finished. See you next week, Lord. We need to be doing it always. Hold on to it. When you're away from this place, when you're at home, when you're going through some of your own struggles, rejoice in the Lord always. So, number two, Paul continues in his writing and he says this, stop worrying and start to pray. Stop worrying and start to pray. He says in verse six, do not worry about anything. You're kidding. I'm just going back to that song. Don't worry. Be, I mean... How can we not worry? You know, if we were to simply take all of the worries of all of us right now, we'd fill this church. The different issues that we deal with, whether it's the international issues that are enormous, whether it's our country's issues, whether it's our personal issues or friends' issues, they are just so surrounding, and we hold on to them. But to say, don't worry, how do we deal with that? What I would like to suggest is that there's a differentiation. I mean, I think, for example, when we look at Israel and those people who've been taken hostage, I mean, how can those parents not worry? They do. And appropriately. But what happens so often is that we have an issue in our lives and we come to God and we say, Lord, here we are and I hand it over to you and it might be this personal issue or relationship or whatever and we say, there you are, Lord. Then we get up and we go, and there's this and there's this and it just eats into us all the time. And I believe that there are so many issues that we can let go of, hand over to God, and then step away and allow God to do some of the working and building and enabling for the healing. But don't worry, because what does he carry on and say? Don't worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, which means supply, let your requests be known to God. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer, let your requests be known to God. So hand over those worries and offer yourself in prayer and supplication, asking God to supply. Hand it over and allow God to take it away and to give us, you, some of the peace that we hunger for. Then, 
Let's go through the first one. Rejoice in the Lord always. Number two, stop worrying and start to pray. And the final point is this. Nothing can hold back God's peace. Nothing can hold back God's peace. I mean, it's a little bit trite to consider. Just let God's peace be with you. And go, mm, yeah. But listen to the words that are said. He says in verse 7, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Our hearts and our minds. I don't know if you recall, but in every worship service that I lead, at the very end of the service, after we've said the final, after communion and we've said the final prayer, we have the blessing. But before the blessing, the words that I say, and different priests vary, but the words that are used that for me are the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And then I say the blessing. But that's this scripture. This is the passage that we've just heard. That's what is used. And this is what we need to hold on to as we go out. The peace of God which passes all understanding. All understanding. Keep our hearts and our minds in the knowledge and the love of God. And then... That peace will surpass all understanding. So for all of us, as we go out from here and as we live our lives of faith, as we uphold some of the international crises, let us just remember some of those words that are shared with us. And you can look them up in your Bible at any time and read them. Rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. We now stand and confess our faith together in the Nicene Creed.